got new bookshelves. This is something that I've been talking about basically since I started my channel because as you saw, my old bookshelves, if you've been here for a while, I ran out of space quickly. I had leaning shelves that took up a lot of space but didn't actually provide a lot of room for books and I've hated them for quite some time now. Got rid of those, got the Ever Loved on Booktube Billy bookshelves, and I overestimated how many books I have, and now I've got a whole shelf that is empty and waiting to be filled. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's discuss what this video is actually about, and that is my TBR for May, which is going to be almost entirely Asian books because Read with Cindy is hosting the Asian Readathon all of May. So my goal, even though there are only five challenges, which we will get to eventually, is to read primarily Asian authors or books with Asian characters, with like maybe one or two exceptions just because of library books coming in, etc., etc. We're gonna get to it. I'm like explaining way too hard, but here's the deal. I own a ton of books that are written by Asian authors. I have a couple out from the library. There's no way that I'll run out of books that are by Asian authors, so I figured let's just gather all of the ones that I have and try and get to them this month. I will be giving you the prompts and then the five books that I'd like to absolutely read this month, and then I'll just show you the rest that I have to kind of mood read. I'm not going to be doing a TBR cart pull for this month. So, the Asian Readathon starts today because it is May 1st, I am late for filming goes all the way to the end of the month. There are five challenges. It is hosted by Cindy, Sandra, Chloe, Cav, and Elias. I will have them all linked down below, of course, obviously. Cindy made the prompts super easy, but also with a caveat. So the prompts are, one, read any book by an Asian author. Super easy. Number two is to read a graphic novel that is written by an Asian author or illustrated by an Asian artist or that features an Asian character. Now, I am also going to be participating in Panelathon, which is later this month, hosted by Natalie over at Pages and Panels. So I'm going to do a completely separate TBR for that. So when you see these books, they're all going to be novels, which is not my typical. I always have graphic novels and mangas like sprinkled in through my month. So I'm going to have a whole separate TBR for that. But for today, I will show one of those because it will cover literally all of the prompts. Number three is to read a book that features an intersectional Asian character or written by an intersectional Asian author. Number four is to read a book that is originally written in an Asian author's native language and then translated. So basically any of the graphic novels and manga that I read, well not the graphic novels, but any of the mangas that I read will count for that. Also, anything by like Murakami is originally written in Japanese and then translated for English, so I do have one of his books on my TBR. I will get it covered. And the fifth is to read the group book, which is A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, edited by Ellen O. Oh. It is a collection of, I believe, 15 short stories written by various Asian authors and their retellings of Asian folklore. I actually started this book yesterday, and I read the first short story, which was written by Rashani Chakshi, who wrote The Gilded Wolves, if you've seen that around booktube a lot recently, and I love it, and I think that I love folklore, and I love all of that kind of stuff, so I think this is going to be right up my alley. I'm reading it in ebook format as the group book, and the group book will actually cover all of the challenges, if I'm not mistaken, so you can just read that and have it count, and you've completed the readathon. But that said, the caveat is that if you do something like that, if you read a book that covers all of the prompts, but you continue, or like half the prompts, but you continue on with the Asian readathon, the challenge then is to not read all authors that are of the same ethnicity. So if you read a Chinese author, you don't want to read like six other Chinese authors. You want to try and get some diversity within Asian culture. So my challenge to myself is this, because I have tons of books that I'd like to read and so I'm working with my own parameters that are read books you own, read books you already have from the library, and fit all the challenges. My goal is to read five different ethnicities because there will be repeat ones. It's just how it's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? I normally read like 12 to 15 books so I think that five is a good goal to have. So the five books I'm gonna tell you right now that I absolutely am going to read 
will cover that goal of reading five different backgrounds and the rest will I'll tell you what ethnicity the author is as I go and that way you can kind of see what I'm reading if you're struggling with any prompts then you'll be able to pull from what I say does that make sense man I'm rusty bulk filming makes you super super rusty all right let's get into it so first and foremost I'm going to be listening on audiobook to shatter me by Tahiri Mafi I have only ever read a very large expanse of sea by her and it's an outlier in her normal writing because it's a contemporary and normally she writes fantasy and everybody's heard of the Shatter Me series because there seems to be like a new book out every six months for that series but Hoopla has the first like four on audiobooks and I'll continue the series depending on how I like it but anyway Tahari Mafi is Iranian so there's one. Next, I will be reading Descendant of the Crane by Joan He. I am really excited to get to this one. Joan He is Chinese, if I haven't said that yet. This is a book about a woman whose father is like the king. Yeah, he is the king of a kingdom where magic is outlawed. He dies. Princess Hesina knows that this, or feels that the circumstances of his death are shysty and she wants to find out what happened and she employs someone who uses magical abilities, which is punishable by death, to find out who killed her father because she's thrust into power that she doesn't want. I've heard nothing but great things about this and I can't wait to get to it. Next is The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeco. This is a story about a necromancer. I don't know much more than this. I know that Mal at Mal to the Any absolutely loves this series. Rin is Filipino. The main character T trains under uh, another witch that's a necromancer and there's a war brewing across the kingdom and apparently it's very action-packed and very lyrically written and I can't wait to get to it. Next I'll be reading The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nunn. I am reading this with Jamie over at Jamie Reads or Buddy Reading, so I have it all marked up for the seven days which we will be reading it together. This is a story about a system where there are three casts, like human, part human, part demon, and then full demon, and girls get taken by the king to kind of be his, like, concubines, I guess? I don't know if that's the right word necessarily, but essentially they get taken and then they are his like personal slaves and they have to answer to his every whim and it's a story about trying to escape that. I've heard mixed reviews on it. I've heard it's really good up until the end. I'm excited to see and decide for myself. Natasha is Chinese Malaysian American. Next I want to get to Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I picked up on Zen Cho as like existing, what the fuck am I saying? Because her latest book, One True Queen, which is also why do I always get ahead of myself? On my TBR had like such a beautiful cover and so I looked into it and one of my best friends is Malaysian so I was like hey this is a Malaysian author writing about Malaysian people. Have you checked it out yet? <laughs> so I told her I'd read it and let her know if it's any good. So the first book, their companion novels if I'm not mistaken is in like they take place in the same world but they're not sequel. One True Queen is not a sequel to Sorcerer's of the Crown but it's about Malaysian witches and sorcerers. Basically in this book, they're trying to preserve magic, it sounds like. I feel like in a lot of fantasy, magic is outlawed, whereas in this, they're trying to not lose it, but the stories are slowly dissipating and the whole point is to try and preserve and save the magic. Sounds very fascinating. In that, on that note, The True Queen, I kept saying one true queen, but The True Queen is the second book. Actually, Samantha Shannon, who wrote The Priory of the Orange Tree, posted about it and that's what put it on my radar. So they're both on my TBR. This is the one I want to get to first because it was written first and if I have time later in the month I will read this as well. As I said, Zen Cho is Malaysian. And then the only manga I'm going to discuss in this video, the rest you'll have to wait till I put my TBR up for the panelathon, is Orange, The Complete Collection Volume 2. This is written by a Japanese author and this will cover literally all of the challenges that are set forth for this readathon. I can't wait to get to Orange. The first collection was a complete five star for me and I want to see how it wraps up. At a group of friends, the main character Naho gets a letter from herself 10 years in the future that convinces her that, you know, she, her future self knows what's happening day by day, proves that she is correct, and then asks her to make changes to save a friend within her friend group. It's pretty heavy. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this, especially for suicide and suicidal ideation and depression and guilt surrounding that. 
it is not a book for you if you struggle with any of those things or if you think that you might get triggered by any of that. But if you think you can handle it, so far I'm really loving it. The first volume was really great. So I'm really excited to get to this. Put it off last month specifically to read this month. Next are a list of books that I that I own that I want to get to that are my Asian authors, except for one that I picked up on a whim from the library. So I'll tell you what they are, give a brief synopsis, and then I'll tell you where the author is from or what the character's ethnicity is. So first up is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I have heard that this is a very heavy book. It's an adult fantasy about a girl named Rin. Her parents want to marry her off, I believe, for the money or like the stab, like where in society that would put them but she wants to train for a very like elite assassin and I believe that's the thing like that's the whole plot of it she makes it into this assassin's training program R.F. Kuang is Chinese. Next I have War Cross by Marie Lu. Marie Lu is Chinese. The story is about a girl named Amika who is like a headhunter for people who illegally play this game War Cross except somehow she gets put into the game and becomes like an overnight sensation but it's very like cutthroat so I'm excited to see what happens. Also mixed reviews. Some people say the second book is better. Some people like this more than the second book but I'd like to see what I think. Next up is Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. I've heard really great things about both this and her other book, which is called Summer Bird Blue. It's YA, I think it's like magical realism contemporary. A story about identity and family and what happens when you find your true self, taken right from the, the blurb there. This girl Kiko, who is half Japanese, has anxieties and I, it sounds as though someone in her family is abusive and she's just trying to find herself basically. Akemi Don Bowman is Japanese. Next up is Haruki Murakami's The Wind Up Bird Chronicles. This is probably the least likely book to actually get read this month because it's a thick one and it's adult contemporary literature basically and it's very tiny text and it usually takes me a while to get through Murakami's bigger books like this. I really would like to but I am not putting money on it. Murakami obviously is Japanese. His work is translated from Japanese to many different languages around the world. Obviously that would cover the challenge of translated from a native language but so will all my graphic novels and manga. So this is my least priority, but I own it, so I wanted to show it just in case. I really do love Murakami. He's like a solid four-star read across the board for me every time I read it, which is a solid author, and I do get excited about his work, but they are usually pretty heavy. He normally writes magical realism that feels very contemporary. Basically, it's a story about a guy named Toru who is searching for his wife's missing cat and then ends up having to find her as well. Actually I was watching uh, Cody from Cody's Book Corner's Wheel of TBR yesterday and she has a Murakami novel on her TBR as well, After Dark, which I read two months ago. And she has, she said it best in that reading the blurb about what the book is about ends up telling you basically nothing because the book is, Murakami's works are always just so out there. So there's your descriptor from the back, but it probably is not going to be like that at all. <laughs> And last but not least, this is not an Asian author, but one of the two main characters is Korean American. So if I do have the opportunity to, I will try to read Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. Obviously this is the biggest stretch of all of the books that I have listed so far, but I don't have any Korean writers, so it could fit. And I've really put this off for a long time. I won this in a giveaway back when it came out in like November, so owned it for a long time and the third book will be out this fall so I do want to get to it eventually but again it's one of along with Murakami's it's least priority but in case you didn't know Nova in this book is Korean American so all right okay that is my Asian readathon TBR I hope I've given you some examples of what you could use for the various prompts for any of the ethnicities that you may be missing and wanted to fill in. I'm really excited. There's not a single book in here that I'm like, eh, maybe I want to read it. I really want to read every single one of those. So I'm not setting myself up for like a huge, last month I had 12 books on my TBR. I think every month previous has been about 12 and I've gotten them done plus some. I'm not trying to stress myself this month. I get to the end of the month and I burn out and I don't want to read anymore. So five books, 
that I showed you will definitely be red and then the rest will just be bonus based on how I feel, my moods, etc. But that's it for me guys. Let me know if you're participating in the Asian Readathon. I'd like to know what's on your TBR. I will be doing weekly vlogs yet again since it's a month long readathon. But other than that, that's it guys. I hope you are having a great day. Good luck this May. Hope April is great ready for some spring slash summer weather. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you are new here and want to see more content from me. All my social media links will be linked down below. I hope you are having a good one. It just dawned on me too that I, I took a guess at what the Owl Crate subscription is this month and I'm pretty sure it will also fit into the TBR. So when it arrives and I unbox it, I will add it to my TBR if it is the book that I think it is. So. We'll see how that goes. I'm also getting Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman this month. And while it is not obviously by an Asian author, I feel like the main character is biracial and one of the ethnicities is Asian. And I'd like to read it this month. So we're really just gonna play those two by ear. The rest, as I said, I've got the five I absolutely will read and everything else is up in the air. All right, okay, bye. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much, we'll see you later. Bye. Notice anything new? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the, the prompts are. <laughs> well, I'm really good at this. <laughs>